Good afternoon. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, Chapter 5. I'm going to cover about 10, 12 of the first slides and talk about some philosophy behind uh, using credit, the correct reasons, the wrong reasons. Um, but certainly, these video lectures don't replace coming to class or reading the chapter. All right, so when we look at the chapter objectives, right, we're going to analyze some of the advantages and disadvantages. Um, what are the different types of credit? And basically, I want you to just have a better understanding philosophically about the good uses and bad uses of credit. A lot of people think that credit somehow is a bad thing, and if you're using your credit card, it's a horrible thing. Um, like all things in life, nothing is completely bad or completely good. Um, there are great uses of credit, um, and if it's abused, obviously there's some problems. So first, what is credit? All right, Credit is an arrangement to receive cash, like a cash advance, your credit card. Um, goods, such as a t-shirt, a jacket, um, a burrito, um, or services, airline tickets, car repair, or anything like that. And as we know, you get those items now, and you pay for them, and you pay for them later. And credit is basically built on trust. The person who's loaning you money is going to trust that you're going to pay them back. The same with operating a bank. Banks work on trust. You give them money and you trust that bank that when you go to make a withdrawal, that bank is going to give you the money plus interest. Right? The credit card companies are counting on you to pay them back plus give them interest. And mostly here we're going to be talking about consumer credit. A lot of times business credit runs much, much differently, but we're concentrating on that. Also, consumer credit is a major force in our economy. Um, car sales would probably drop by 60% if we didn't have consumer credit. Um, half the retail sales probably wouldn't take place. The amount of shoes, coats, jackets, clothing, electronics that wouldn't get sold would be huge. And so we need credit to support the economy. One thing that I would certainly say is let somebody else borrow all that money and buy stuff and support the economy. And whenever you can, you pay cash and you worry about your economy and your net worth and do your best to stay out of credit card debt. So what are some of the uses and misuses? Well, first off, one of the things when you go to buy something, you need to look, do I have money for the down payment? If you're going to buy a car and you got no money for a down payment, you're going to buy a $400 leather jacket and it's not like you can put $200 down and then finance $200 of it. Um, you probably can't afford that item and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, one of the other things, do I want to use my savings for this purchase? One thing that we do not want to do, we talked about this in a previous chapter, is leave ourselves very short on liquidity. If all I have to my name is $20,000 and I need to buy a new car and that car is $30,000, I do not want to put $20,000 down on the car and finance $10,000 and leave me with no cash. I don't want to be in that situation because if I lose my job or some other emergency comes up, I have nothing to backstop me. We also uh, want to make sure that this fits our budget. Does it fit our goals? And one of the biggest things that I would say that you should think about when using credit is can I postpone this purchase? So in other words, we know from pretty much all studies that if you're looking at a shirt or a jacket or almost anything that you want to buy and you tell the store, you know what, hold this, I'll be back tomorrow to buy it. 90% of the time, you won't go back. 90% of the time, you'll get home and say, you know, uh, I really didn't need that shirt, that jacket, those pants, those shoes, whatever it is. Um, in fact, if you say, hold this item for me for like two hours, I'm going to go to the food court and you get a taco and a soda, well over 50, 60% of the time, you're not even going to walk the 200 feet from the food court 
back to the store to buy the item. Um, and that's a great strategy that people use. Also, certainly there's a huge psychological cost when dealing with credit, especially when we're overextended. An awful lot of people feel horrible about themselves. And so what they do is they go out and spend money. And spending money becomes a drug. And honestly, in the short run, drugs make you feel better. If drugs always made you feel worse, nobody would ever use them. But like in the use of drugs, um, you end up using drugs, you feel better for a little while, and then depending on whether you're using something to speed you up, you wake up three days later with the same problems and fewer brain cells. Um, if you're using something to slow you down, you wake up three days later and you're in a more of a depressive state, you've dug yourself a deeper hole, buying stuff especially on credit, is the exact same thing. You go out and for a couple days you feel great. you got new golf clubs. You've got you know, new clothes. You've got a new TV. But you wake up with the same issues that you have further in debt. Now, certainly we have to realize that buying stuff f makes you feel good. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with buying something and feeling good. But we want to make sure that at the end of the day, we don't have huge regrets and we haven't just dug ourselves in a hole that makes us worry every single day. And the next thing you know, every time the credit card bill comes in the mail, you're going, my God, what is this credit card going to bill be? Will I ever get my credit cards paid off? Um, I'm such a loser. I can't make enough money to pay these things off. That is not a good place to be. So keep that in mind. If you've got, there, uh, debt has emotional cost. It's a weight on you. Um, and keep track of that. So what are the advantages of credit? Certainly, there's great advantages of credit. The number one obvious one is that you get to use the goods and services now and pay for them later. That's not always a bad thing. If I had $27 in my checking account, yet my favorite uncle died in Florida um, and I got no way to get there. Credit cards are a perfect use to say, hey, here's 300 bucks for the airline ticket, 200 for a hotel, another couple hundred for food. I'm going to go out. I'm going to see my uncle. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to hug my aunt. I'm going to support my mom and dad. I'm going to see my other family and then fly back. Even if it takes me six months to pay that off, at the end of the day, I'm going to look back and be glad that I went to do that. I'm going to be glad that I was there to support my family. That's much, much different than, you know what, I think I just want shinier wheels on my car. Two totally different issues. Um, credit also gives us certainly a cushion for financial emergencies, not only traveling out to see friends and uh, not only traveling for funerals, but uh, maybe my water heater went out, I dropped the transmission, lots of things that could happen. So having credit and having access to credit is important. This also means that you have room at the same time on your credit card. You can't get a credit card with a $5,000 limit and run the thing up to $5,000 and have no financial cushion at all. You need that. The other big thing about a credit card is it's much, much easier at times to return merchandise. If you go back to a store and that store doesn't want to give you the money back and maybe you got a defective product, they're not following their own store policy, and they just refuse to give you your money back. You call up the credit card company, you explain the situation, and the credit card company will credit your credit card and charge back the merchant for you. And the credit card companies, by policy, have to be on your side. The merchants then have the opportunity to challenge that and give their explanation, 
and sometimes a credit card company ends up being the third party arbiter between those two things. But most of the time, the credit card company is going to come down on your behalf. And it just gives you a way to reach in and force a refund when people do not want to give it to you. One of the other things that I really like is it provides me a great record of expenses. I put just about everything on a credit card. And at the end of the month, I get a list of everything that I spent. I keep that. It goes into a file. And so I've got a list of all my expenses. I actually have an American Express card um, through Costco because I get Costco rebates, which work out really well for me. But that listing there is invaluable. One of the other big advantage, it's certainly safer than carrying cash. About two weeks ago, I went down to Home Depot and I was buying some new flooring and I actually bought a couple appliances. I don't want to walk into Home Depot with $6,000 cash in my pocket because maybe I pull out the money to buy a soda, someone sees all that money and the next thing you know, I'm getting mugged. Or maybe someone calls me on my cell phone, I reach in my pocket, I pull out my cell phone, and I just drop a wad of $2,000 on the ground. Maybe there's going to be a nice person to give it back to me, maybe not. If I'm holding my credit card, I drop my credit card on the ground, I lose my credit card, I call the credit card company up, and they're going to send me a new credit card in three or four days. So it's certainly much, much safer than that, than carrying cash. So what are some of the big disadvantages of credit? And we hear them all the time, the overuse of credit, that Americans are overextended. One of the biggest problems is a temptation to overspend, and it's there. Most studies have shown individuals that use cash spend 15%, if not more, less than people that pay on credit cards. So in other words, you're at a store shopping, you're going to buy $200 worth of clothes. There's just something emotional when you pull out cash and you have to hand cash over. Somehow, just innately, we have a much, much closer tie to cash than we do to putting a credit card down when we don't have to pay for that for a month. So therefore, we're more careful with cash. Whereas I would spend $200 at the store on clothes um, with cash, I'll spend $230 or more with a credit card. This is also shown very true when eating out. People who eat out at medium priced and above restaurants are much, much more likely to order appetizers if you're paying by credit card and much, much more likely to order the second drink or desserts at the same time. And so um, food bills paid by credit cards are uh, 10 to 15 percent higher also. So you just need to be cognizant of, uh, of that. But one of the things that I really want to get across when using credit cards more than almost anything else is the fourth point down here on the slide where it says it ties up future income. Because the, whenever you use credit, in fact whenever you spend money on anything, that's what I want you to think about. You're holding this $400 jacket, and maybe you make 15 bucks an hour. After taxes and gas to get to and from work, you make 10 bucks an hour net. Is this $400 jacket worth 40 hours of work? Would you rather have that jacket or a week off? Would you rather have that jacket or five Fridays off or five Mondays off? Would you rather have that jacket or, quite frankly, put 40 hours into pretty much any class that you have and you're going to take a class you're getting a C- minus in and you're going to move it to a B plus or an A by adding 40 hours worth of work? Um, that's what I look at when I look at, say, buying a car. I rarely ever buy a new car. In fact, I've only bought one new car in my life because certified used cars tend to be so good. And so I look at a certified car and a brand new car, and there's a twenty-five or thirty thousand dollar difference depending on the type of car you're going to buy. And I look at that and say, "Wow, how much work do I have to do to come up with thirty thousand dollars? And is it worth it?"
To me, it's not. Um, going back to the leather jacket, you know, maybe it's a really cool leather jacket. The leather jacket you have, you wore out. You wear your leather jacket all the time when you go out to a club, you go to the beach at night all the time. Um, you spend a lot of time going to baseball games at night, so you're going to wear this leather jacket a lot. Then fine, buy the leather jacket. But just be cognizant of the number of hours that it takes to uh, earn that. All right. And the last slide that we're going to cover today are the two basic types of credit. Closed end credit is kind of like your auto loan. The loan is set up and everything is set in stone at the time you sign the deal. So when you're getting a car, it's going to be, say, $23,000 for the car. They're going to set the interest rate at 8%. You're going to pay over five years, and your payment's going to be $324. And so you're going to pay $324 every single month for five years. Three years into this deal, you cannot say, hey, I've paid off 60% of my auto loan. I need new wheels and tires because they're worn out and I like those new wheels because they're shinier. Um, why don't I just buy new wheels and tires, take the $3,000 and place them into my auto loan? It, it doesn't work that way. It's set. You can pay your auto loan off early. In fact, there tends to be uh, very few types of consumer loans these days in which there's prepayment penalties. Um, but you cannot just dump that onto the loan and extend the loan or increase the payments. Everything is fixed, which is different than open-end credit. Open-end credit is your Visa card. You open up your account, and they give you a credit line of, say, $3,000. You take that, and you charge $1,000 on it, pay it down to five, charge it up to 13, pay it down to 1,000, charge it to 2,000, pay it off in full. It goes back and forth. Your interest rate that starts out at 12% might go up to 14%, might go to 22 It could drop down to 9 Everything within that account is flexible. Uh, Visa can extend credit. They can add credit. They could cut your credit line back. So you could have started with 5 Everything's going well. They increase it to 12 You have a few late payments, and they cut your credit down to 2000 the same thing with you, however. You have just as much flexibility with that also. You might be paying 14% on that Visa card, and you have an outstanding balance of 3000 and you get a much better deal somewhere else at 8% to transfer the balance over. You can then call them up, transfer that balance on over to a new card, pay a much lower rate, totally pay off the first Visa account, and if you want, you can close that account. You would tend not to want to close the account because when you close an account, it hurts your credit score. You'd want to leave that open unless you're being charged annual fees. If you're being charged an annual fee on your credit card, then you want to close it if you're not using it. Don't pay $45 a year to have a card sit there that you're not using at all. 